Welcome to this week's end of day's update coming to you from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Just got off the airplane, had a great time in, in Pittsburgh at Berean Fellowship. We did Gifts of the Spirit Sunday uh, morning and night. Uh, no, Saturday morning, Saturday night, and Sunday got into end times and Gifts of the Spirit again. Had a great time. And then uh, if, if you're anywhere near uh, Hobbs, New Mexico, we'll be there tonight, Wednesday night. We'll have a great time at Choose Life Church. And then in this weekend, if you're anywhere near the Jackson, Mississippi area, we'll be in Relate Church Sunday through Wednesday, Sunday morning. Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll have a great time. These are all wonderful churches that I've been to over the years. Such such good people, such hungry people. It is amazing every week, not just the end of day's update, but every church you go to, people are grasping it that the signs are pointing to the return of the Lord. We're so privileged and so blessed to see it right in front of our eyes. So uh, let's pick up with what's happened around Israel. You know, we, what we look at on the update is the nations that are basically gathering for the Ezekiel 38 war because the rapture is signless. But the second coming has tons of signs. I've heard such weird preaching on the rapture and such weird preaching on the second coming. The, the Bible is so clear about the two distinct uh, comings. In the Gospels, you'll only think things about the second coming. You have to get into the epistles before you see about the rapture. So oftentimes people will put gospel verses on the rapture and you'll feel like you don't qualify because you don't. Jesus had been raised from the dead. But once he's raised from the dead, you're him as he is, so are we in this world. So exciting things are happening, man. This I'll try to get in everything I can because so much happened this last week. Let's start with, uh, there was another Israeli airstrike in southern Syria this time, not northern Syria. Another convoy of missiles coming down from Iran into Syria, making its way toward Lebanon. And uh, that's the fifth one in two weeks. I mean, Israel's literally having to go for it. Why? Because the International Atomic Energy Agency keeps talking about Iran, how close they are with all their centrifuges and they're changing their Iranian uh, production. Uh, it's weird to see them even talk with such urgency. The last five, seven years, even when things were not happening with Iran, they were pretty casual and pretty laid back about what was happening in Iran. There's been a super intensity. And I think that's why Israel's literally having to go kind of take the proactive stance on this. Many things keep happening, though. You've got uh, Syrian army troops uh, that are Arabs on the northern part of Israel. Basically, it's in the Lebanon area of Mount Hermon Mountains, a big brigade of soldiers there. So Israel's retaliated to bring soldiers up there. It looks like they're trying to invade from Lebanon. So lots of crazy things happening uh, everywhere with all these things. I mean, you had a missile fly into Saudi Arabia uh, yesterday, a big explosion. You had missiles flying from drones into Saudi Arabia. They were intercepted. So uh, that's, that's now, why do I say that? That's Iran with the Houthi rebels firing from uh, Yemen into Saudi Arabia. And so you know, Saudi Arabia has made the choice to be with Israel. It's really wild. A, a percentage came out the other day that 81% of the Arab nations don't approve of the Palestinians right now. So that's absolutely amazing. The Palestinians don't have the backing they used to have from all the Arabs. With that, uh, with what Iran's looking to try to do, you have America uh, literally looking at new places for bases in Saudi Arabia, opening up some new ports, some new airstrips, uh, basically logistics for, for more for America in case Iran was to do something crazy. I mean, when you have the International Atomic Energy Agency with a supernatural urgency that they've been having and you never see that, I think that's kind of preaching to everyone that something's up. So, and then you had China. Gosh, you had China uh, take several squadrons of fighter planes into Taiwanese uh, airspace. Uh, Taiwan basically put out their jets to intercept them. In the midst of that, then China put in bombers, flew bombers right over that were capable of carrying nuclear weapons. So America sent an aircraft carrier battle group. So you see the East doing things that the Bible says they'll do at the end of the tribulation. So uh, more and more things keep happening. I mean, you've got interesting things happening. You've got a church in California that was bombed for tradition preaching traditional marriage. Uh, you have many things that keep coming up about the Antichrist. If we went into all the things about reset that's happening with the, uh, the world, it really is pointing to the entrance of the Antichrist. You have Turkey doing some interesting stuff. Uh, they're trying to, they called it, quote, their anti-terrorism act to go over by Mount Ararat. That's exactly where uh, at the end of the flood, Noah's boat, the ark basically rested. And it's weird how Turkey systematically surrounded Israel in Libya and then in northern Syria and then the waters off the coast of the Mediterranean uh, trying to go after the gas pipelines of Cyprus and uh, Greece. So it's weird they, under the cloak of we're doing these other things to help these nations, they've basically surrounded Israel. With that, you've got Jordan coming against Israel about the Temple Mount again. They're so freaked out about Israel doing stuff to basically protect the Temple Mount and the Western Wall. So 
I think you're going to see tons more about the Temple Mount in the days to come because that's what the main war is going to be over. But you literally see all these nations doing little things that point to what's going to happen after the rapture of the church. So that's exciting. Now remember Jesus said, when you see, uh, he said, hey, you can tell what the weather's going to be. You don't know your hour your visitation is. So I think it bothered him. He never <coughs> rebuked the crowd, but he rebuked the Pharisees over and over again. And England thought that was a big point to, to say amen to. But it's something Jesus wants us to know. I hear people say, well, you can't tell when the Lord's coming back. That's what all the signs are for to show us how close we are. There's more verses written about what it would look like just before He comes, so we would have a heads up. Remember, for every one verse there is about the first coming of the Lord, eight times more about the second coming. Paul talked about the baptism 12 times, coming of the Lord 52 times. So it's so documented so we'd make preparation. This is not escape theology. This is when you see the finish line, you accelerate. Wow, we're about to see Jesus, our Redeemer, our King our Lord, our Savior, our God face to face. Let's go to the scripture though and look at the signs. We do it every week. Number one, Israel made a nation. Number two, Jerusalem won back. After that, you got the Hebrew language restored. You got the Ethiopian Jews brought back. You got the fertility of the land of Israel. You got the revival of the Roman Empire. You have 172 different species of predatory birds. Amazing. You have fish showing up in the Dead Sea this last year. You have the ritual baths around the Temple Mount fill up with water. You had foxes on the Temple Mount. And you had the Sea of Galilee fill up with water. You had Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri prophesied about two Benjamins that would be ruling Israel right before the coming of the Lord. And actually, I forgot something. Uh, Benjamin Gantz had a huge uh, speech about earthquakes, earth, earthquake preparedness. He said, it looks like we might have one that could destroy 80,000 buildings. So it's interesting, the urgency coming from people knowing something's coming. So then you have all those signs. Men will be lovers themselves. We have selfie sticks. You have the blood red moons on Passover and Tabernacles. Four in a row. NASA called it a tetrad. When's the last time you had four blood red moons in a row on Passover and Tabernacles? 1967 when Jerusalem was won back. 1948 when Israel was made a nation. And 1492 at the Edict of Expulsion when the Jews were kicked out of Spain. Amazing. Then you had the Bethlehem Star last year. We don't even have time to preach about that. You should look it up on YouTube. It's an hour-long video by an attorney from Nashville. So good. The bonus feature that's two minutes long will freak you out. Absolutely amazing. So you have all the, these intricate things, uh, signs, signals, uh, things showing us. What do we do? Help our local church, help our local pastor. This is the time you're engaged more. You, you're, you're more involved in your church. You don't fit church into your life. It is your life. Why? We're about to see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Uh, I believe we're, we're in, in for some wonderful things just here before the rapture of the church. So let's be, be all in, be supernaturally engaged. Pray more than you've ever prayed. Worship more than you've ever worshipped. Study more of the Word. Hear more of the Word than you ever had before. Wow, all of a sudden you're going to see His eyes as a flame of fire, feet like undefined brass, voice of many waters, the shepherd and the bishop of our souls, the firstborn from the dead. He's the lily of the valley. He's the brightness of the glory of God. Wow. Thanks for uh, tuning in this week. We'll come back next week. We'll talk about the locusts that are swarming on the eastern part of Africa. And there's so much stuff I can't get into it in this shorter period of time because uh, England's telling me I need to tone it down. So we're going to stop for the week. Thanks for joining us this week. We'll see you next Wednesday. Thanks for joining us today at the End of Days Update. If you'd like to be notified every time there's a new post, just go to the edu at josephmorris.com and subscribe to receive email alerts. If these posts and updates have been a blessing to you, please consider making a one-time donation to help get the message out or even becoming a monthly partner with Joseph Morris Ministries. Thanks again for tuning in to the EDU, and we'll see you next week.